It looks like even Quest Nutrition could not overcome this abominably complex retailing environment. On July 8th of 2020, the, or is it the, kind of like the Ohio State University, I guess I'll have to get commentary from them, but the or the Simply Good Foods company just reported its quarterly earnings. And if you're not too familiar with Simply Good Foods company, uh, they are a portfolio of a few like health and nutrition or health and wellness, like CPG and snacking brands. And those brands are Atkins Nutritionals from the Atkins Diet, a brand that's still out there a little bit, but they don't talk too much around, a Simply Protein, and then also Quest Nutrition. So this is actually fiscal quarter three. It's not, they don't do a calendar year, so it's not quarter two like you're gonna be hearing me talk about in some of the other videos coming up over the next couple of weeks. But this quarter actually was like right in the heart of what was going on with COVID-19 in terms of like the retailing environment. So there's like a ton of stuff going on. This was March, April, and May. The ending date of this quarter was May 30th, uh, 2020. So this is arguably going to be the most kind of important or I guess from an insight perspective, if you are anything around like a functional food, protein bar, um, healthy snacking company, this is a pretty good report for you to look at and just kind of see what could happen during that time frame and, and try to pull some learnings and things that, that could potentially help you if we do kind of run back into some type of like restricted living or you know the economy starts to go back in a different direction in terms of like a shutdown. This is a really good report for those types of companies to kind of look at. So on these like quarterly videos, I'm gonna be adding a lot of my insights and perspective at the end of this video, but I do want to run through some of the just like financial results just so you guys can understand from both from like the portfolio level and from the brand level, some commentary that was both in the report and on the conference call. So Simply Good Foods Company does a really good job of actually putting together some presentation slides as well. So I'll add those like, like I've done in some of the other previous uh, quarterly breakdown videos. So for the quarter three revenue of the Simply Good Foods Company, it was $215.1 million. That was up 54.2 on a year to year basis, but was down 5.3% on a quarter to quarter sequential basis. So you're gonna see that 54.2 number and really kind of, wow, that's they've performed extremely well. But let's kind of break that down a little bit further into like the brand level. You had Atkins Nutritionals, that brand was down 8.3% in the quarter. Then you see Quest Nutrition, it's up 62.5%. And this is actually the second quarter of sales that they're counted in the financials. So they were previously a privately held company, Simply Good Foods Company bought them, and this is the second full quarter of sales that are in the numbers. So these numbers are acquisition-based comparative growth and not necessarily from a year-to-year -year basis on Quest. Now doing some quick calculations to help us get to that Quest Nutrition revenue number, in the quarter, Quest's revenue was somewhere around $87.2 million, which Simply Good Foods leadership team is saying is, is slightly down on a year-to-year -year perspective in terms of them obviously knowing the numbers of Quest Nutrition. And then if you look at this like a sequential quarter over quarter numbers, it was down as well from the $88.3 million fiscal quarter two revenue for Quest Nutrition. One of the big things that you'll notice in the report is that despite the complex retailing environment and some top line sales numbers that were not growing similar to some of the previous quarters, you saw a margin expansion. Um, you had actually 60 basis points of gross margin gain, and this was mostly because of a decline in planned trade spending and marketing and things that happened around the quarter and just a lot of that promotional calendar being suspended by a lot of the large retailers. And then you also had a 240 basis point gain on the net side because they were able to better manage their sales general and administrative costs. They expect some of this to kind of revert back in the next quarter as retailers expect to uphold fall resets and resume planned promotional schedules. So I do want to kind of just take a brand by brand perspective. I want to talk about Quest Nutrition first here. 
retail takeaway in track channels. And what we talk about when we do track channels, there are elements of non-track channels that Quest Nutrition's in. I think it's about 45% of their business is in untracked channels. So that's like online, that's specialty retailers and some small convenience stores. But retail takeaway on the track channels, so this is like mass, large convenience stores, grocery, uh, drug stores, club stores, uh, that was a growth of 5.2% year over year, which is better than the category average of down 7.8% year over year. So considerably better performance by Quest Nutrition comparable to its competitors. This growth was driven by a whopping 54.2% growth in cookies and chips. But they also commented that the ready to drinks that are a fairly new performed well in this quarter. Alternatively, the bars were down 17.6% year over year. And this is the largest part of the Quest Nutrition portfolio. So as you can see, that really dragged down the overall performance of the brand. The difference in performance from cookies and chips and bars is the perceived use occasions with consumers. If you think about cookies and chips, they would fall into something more traditionally consumed at home as a snack. These usually fall in line with use cases of traditional products, so cookies and chips that have nothing to do with better for you or, or health and wellness. Those things are also consumed as like an at-home snack. But if you think about a bar, they're used as more of like a portable on-the-go snack. Um, and because there was like restricted living situations that happened from March to May in terms of this quarter, that really hurt the overall business for Quest Nutrition being that they are dominated by the bar category. Additionally, while not mentioned on the call, I've noticed anecdotally that chips and cookies, including some of the multi-pack offerings, have been showing up across large retail formats in center store areas where shoppers are still frequenting during COVID-19 in-store shopping behavior. Quest Nutrition also relies more on the specialty and convenience channels compared to Atkins Nutritionals. So this particular quarter was a challenge due to the intermittent store closures and restricted living situation that caused less people to be moving around and less people to be shopping at convenience stores. Now moving into the Atkins Nutritionals brand, the retail takeaway mostly followed Quest Nutrition as bars struggled with being down 13.4% year over year. They did have some struggles in their RTD beverages, but similarly, at home snacking skews that fit into Atkins Indulge Confections lineup was up 12.4%. A great deal of Atkins Nutritionals is merchandised in these like healthy living, active nutrition, HABA sections, uh, depending on what the retailers call them, um, which are seeing slightly less traffic because of the streamlined shopping trips that focused on staples and shoppers looking to really just get in and out of the store as quick as possible so they can prioritize health. That has created less new buyer growth. The team also commented that Atkins performed better in smaller grocery retailers compared to mass retailers because of shoppers looking to limit crowd exposure. The biggest bright spot for Atkins was their performance in digital sales. The quarter had e-commerce sales growth of 125% year over year. The contribution to year over year sales percentage comparative was 6% from e-commerce, and it now makes up 9% of the total sales for the Atkins Nutritionals brand. If you think about this, Atkins Nutritionals has really kind of tried their best to transform their business as quick as possible, and they've grown their brand over the last two and a half years in e-commerce three times the level it was before. So they're really focusing on this in a substantial way, but they do have a long way to go. If you watched my last quarterly breakdown video for the Simply Good Foods company, I did have like extensive like forward-looking commentary on a few kind of areas. One of them was what like the Quest 
Atkins uh, product mix, how that was going to fit in the COVID-19 world. Also Quest Atkins channel strategy, how that was going to work. And then also just like supply chain and then the balance sheet strength for the Simply Good Foods company. And I'll pop up the video here for you guys if you want to watch that. Um, a lot of those things started to play out and looked very similar to what I was saying. As you saw this roller coaster action that happened across the U.S. retailing landscape. Quarter started with this intense stock up period, followed by the second month of the quarter, which was a rebalancing of the purchasing of consumers. And they basically used up a lot of their personal inventory to preserve cash during the restricted living situation in April in uncertainty in the economy. As the states and economy started to open back up in May, you could see purchasing from the track channels resuming closer to pre-COVID-19 levels. Now for the last part of this video, I do want to make some additional commentary on kind of the COVID-19 effect, specifically to the brands of the Simply Good Foods company portfolio. Common theme to look out for is the shifts in use cases that they talked about throughout this report. Because Simply Good Foods company is made up of 55% or so of bar business, they did struggle with you know, more than half of this quarter in some type of like restricted living situation where consumers were not able to move around a lot and they weren't able to be on the go uh, to need those types of products. So as the economy starts to open up and maybe in some areas, maybe go backwards a little bit here, it's something to pay attention to in the business because a lot of the Simply Good Foods companies revenue does come from bars. Additionally, there were some kind of short term value proposition kind of like devaluation or like diminishing uh, value propositions that were happening in the short term around COVID-19. If you think about somebody not able to maybe go to the gym and not be able to move around and not go on vacation and not go to the pools and different things that they're used to, the motivation for a lot of people to maybe have some of those like health and wellness type of goals or weight management goals, a lot of the value propositions that the Simply Good Foods Company's products kind of focus around, those were not as important. Uh, short term. I don't think that those go away at all. I don't think that all of a sudden we stop thinking about those things. But I think in a, in a short term way, I think people were preserving their energy. They were thinking more in terms of like mental wellness. Um, you saw a lot of people like indulging a little bit more because they were trying to really balance some extra stressors in their lives. But I think this definitely is just a short term thing. There's also kind of some trends here going around like long term versus short term thinking. Uh, because of Simply Good Foods, having a pretty strong capitalization, also being able to turn some cash right now and having some available credit lines and different things available to them. They are thinking long-term, what's great for the brand? They are serving the right master. They're thinking about the brand and the customer over thinking about how do we turn cash as quick as possible and serving the wrong master. I think that will set up perfectly for when all these things clear up because they'll be in a very strong position. That being said, I think there are some like short-term pluses, some like really, uh, I wouldn't call them pivots, but like things that could be done short term just to kind of spike some sales in some areas that maybe are struggling. One of the things that they did talk about on the conference call was calling out some more of the kind of like immune support claims on specifically like the Atkins Nutritionals RTD SKUs uh, because they are vitamin fortified and just making sure they have some extra call outs there. When weight management being the kind of the big call outs and value propositions on that brand, those subsiding a little bit like I just talked about. If you think about what is really gaining up is like people thinking about immune support and boosting their immune system. So if you do have the ability to call some of those things out and you have the right inclusions in your product to be able to use those claims on packaging, I think it's a good idea to do that in the short term. One of the other things that shined really bright for the Simply Good Foods company and something that I called out like right on the acquisition of Quest Nutrition was the supply chain supremacy and just honestly the know-how of the Simply Good Foods leadership team. They come from a very rich CPG background. Uh, these are operators. These are people that understand how to move goods around in a profitable way, and they understand how to scale businesses. And I think that that was exactly what was needed during this quarter. You needed some people that were tried and true in the CPG world to be able to overcome a lot of these things. And the CEO actually commented that they had a flawless uh, supply chain quarter. And I think this is something that just further sets them up for strength after some uncertainty starts to clear away in the market. Now a little bit thinking about like assuming the future. I don't particularly think we go back into some type of like 
national shutdown situation. I think that is catastrophic for the American economy and Americans overall. So I don't think that anything will allow us to get back to that level. But that does not mean that certain cities or certain regions will start to restrict living a little bit more and roll back some of their opening up plans. So that's something to really be paying attention to, regardless if you're Simply Good Foods Company or you're any business in the CPG world that does kind of have some connection to maybe the gyms or, or having people move around and some propositions around maybe weight management and health and wellness, you need to be looking out at what is happening across the country in terms of like opening up the economy. I've mentioned many times um, to my clients that just because retailers or the economy is opening up, does not mean that consumers are opening up. So a lot of people have been very much scared in this situation. And that does not mean that just because there is an open sign that they're gonna rush out and start shopping or start to go to the gym again or start to think like they did pre-COVID-19. So that's something to really think about regardless of what the plans are. Also, what is just the psyche of the American consumer? Some common focuses right now is that e-commerce is gonna consistently and continually grow. Atkins Nutritionals and any products that have some element of like maybe chocolate coating or things. This is kind of coming into the point in the summer where a lot of those things start to shut off, especially with Amazon. So you're gonna really need to focus on how that customer experience is. Also, how are you going to ship those things maybe on a direct to consumer way? I think there's also just a focus on like at home snacking. There's a ton of opportunity there as people are closer to their pantries, they're able to grab snacking a lot more. You need to maybe think about how do you change some of the communication with some of your products change the perceived use cases outside of like on the go and, and more into like how they could be utilized in the home to also meet your goals. And then this idea of like diversification of product formats. I think Simply Good Foods being very much a bar business, uh, though they have some other kind of categories on the Quest nutrition side that is around like chips and pizzas and cookies. From the call, it doesn't sound like Simply Good Foods has a disruption thought pattern in terms of like their innovation pipeline, their new product pipeline. They didn't really make any reference of anything that they were gonna be coming out with. So my interpretation of that is that they're on the prowl kind of looking for maybe some market vetted, market validated areas that they'll be able to pick up something from a mergers and acquisitions perspective. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna help support me, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on this video. If this is the first time you've been introduced to my videos, would love for you guys to be a part of my community by subscribing to my channel. I upload several videos just like this weekly. And if you guys wanna connect further outside of this platform, I do include all of my social media links down below. I just wanna thank you guys again for your time. Hopefully I gave you value in return and we'll see you guys on the next video.